Hello everyone and welcome back to this course on introduction to data science. In this video we start with lecture 2 and uh, we continue where we ended in lecture 1. So if you watch that video, the last video of lecture 1, um, maybe you remember that we discussed how to find structure in a data set. For example, if we have a data set, can we describe it with a normal distribution? Because if we find structure in a data set, we can also find extreme observations. Extreme observations are observations that do not follow the pattern that the majority of the data is following. So let's uh, continue in this video with uh, talking a bit more about these extreme observations. And if you talk about extreme observations or extreme points, we, um, in two dimensions, we distinguish two types of extreme points. There are the outliers. These are observations that are unusual in the y direction. So if you take a two-dimensional data set, you have x, you have y, then y is often the what we call the response or the target variable. That's the thing that we want to predict. So an outlier is a very large or very small value in the y direction in the response variable. A high leverage point is an unusual observation in the x direction. And the x is often the variable that we need to explain to predict the y. So if we have more, uh, more dimensions, we often have one y. There is one thing that we want to uh, predict, for example, the weather or the stock market. And then you have one x that you can use to predict the, uh, the response, or you have multiple. And if you have unusual observations in the x direction, then we talk about a high leverage point. And of course, if we talk about outliers and high leverage points, and I will give you an example in a minute, you can have observations that are and outliers and a high leverage point. So you can have an observation that's very large in the x direction, you can have an observation that's very large in the y direction, you can have observations that are both large in the x and the y direction, and then they are outliers and high leverage points at the same time. So why is, it, why is it important to study uh, outliers and high leverage points? First of all, we want to investigate the sensitivity of our model and the results um, on the extreme observations. So if we have extreme observations, outliers and or high leverage points, then there is always the question, what do we do with them? Do we leave them uh, in the data set or do we remove it? And there are, um, there are different reasons that can lead to different conclusions. For example, think about the stock markets. If you want to investigate how the stock markets behave, for example, you want to do portfolio selection in, say, normal times, then, of course, you can say, well, if I have extreme observations, meaning a stock market crash, maybe I remove that for the moment for my data set, because I want to focus on the, say, the normal, the regular days. So then you can remove the outlier. However, sometimes you are especially interested in the outliers. You want to build a portfolio strategy and you want to make sure that if there is a very extreme stock market event, your portfolio will not be ruined. So in that case, removing the outlier actually means that you remove the most important part of your data set. The goal is to protect your portfolio from extreme observations, so you shouldn't remove them, right? So even with the same data set, depending on what your goal is, what you try to achieve with your data science study, you are going to remove or keep the outlier. That's very important. Of course, there is the question, should I keep the outlier or should I remove the outlier? On the other hand, there is the model and the results. And you want to also investigate what is the effect of my actions, removing or keeping the outlier, on the final results. So therefore, sometimes it is um, a good idea to run your data study first with the outliers and high leverage points and then without these extreme observations. Because if you see that your conclusions, your results are not um, that highly affected by the choice of removing or keeping the outlier, then you can say, well, 
whatever we do, it at least it does not um, have a major impact on the next steps. Of course, if you find that your actions, removing or keeping the outline, has a major impact on the results, maybe in one case you should buy, the other case you should sell a stock, well, in that case you say, well, we have to be very careful about what we do. So let me illustrate the previous point with a simple example. So I take this data set and I have three extreme observations. There is observation A, B, and C. And as you can see, A is an extreme observation because it's very large. It's much larger than the rest of, of the observations in the y direction. So A is an outlier. It's an extreme observation in the y direction. Observation C is also an extreme observation, but it's very large in the x direction. So C is what we call a high leverage point. And finally, observation B is both an outlier and a high leverage point, because B is very large in the y direction and very large in the x direction. And if you have a look at the data set, we can focus first on this red area, which is the majority of the data. So we have the data plus three extreme observations. And it seems that a linear model is a good fit for that part of the data. The question is now, what is the impact on observation A, B, C on the linear model? So we are going to fit different linear, linear models, first only with the uh, regular red observation, say, then with the normal observations plus A, plus B, plus C, to see what is the effect. On this slide, I have the R code to create the data set. So I have my, say, my regular observations are the X1, Y1 values. These are the points that I circled in red. And then you have the observation A, which is the outlier, observation B, which is the outlier plus high leverage point, and observation C, which is the high leverage point. So you can, you have the data, so the R codes to generate the data set, also the uh, linear models that I will fit, you have all the data, uh, all the R code to, um, to redo the, um, the figures and the plots and the tables that I show in the slides. So also for the other parts, slides of the, uh, of the presentation, where you see R code, where you see tables, where you see figures, all the R code is available, so you can uh, play with that yourself to see what is happening and maybe uh, understand better what is going on. So the data set is first 19 basis points and then three extreme observations, an outlier, high leverage point, and an observation which is high leverage plus outlier at the same time. We are going to fit a linear regression model, but the idea of the illustration is that we fit different models by adding um, extreme observations to see the effect. So here I do it with a linear regression model because that's the easiest also um, to have a look at the results you directly see what's going on, but the, um, the ID applies to any predictive machine learning model that you are, you are using. So if you have a much more complex data set, if you detect the outliers and the high leverage points, you fit your machine learning model on different, different data sets. The basis data set, then the data set with some of the observ extreme observations and so on. So in this particular case, uh, we first start with a linear regression model without any extreme observations. Then we take the um, three linear models where we each time we add one of the extreme observations. So for example, we can see what's the effect of having observation A added to our uh, data set. So we have the 19 basis points plus the outlier A. And then we can see what's the effect of B on my data set. So I have the 90 basis points plus observation B, and the same holds for observation C. So then let's have a look at the result. So we have the red line, this one here, which is 
the linear model with only the 19 basis points. So you see it's a nice linear model going through all these 19 data points. And then we look, for example, at the blue line. And the blue line is the linear model where I use the basis points plus observation A. And you see that the effect is quite small. Because you add observation A, which is quite large in the y direction, you push your regression line a little bit in the y direction, up in the y direction, but for the rest it seems to be an adequate fit for your 19, um, 19 basis points. Same if we add observation B. Here is observation B, and the black line is actually very small to the to the red line. So again, you have a minimal effect of adding observation B, which, if you look at the uh, at the data points, then although B is large in the x and the y direction at the same time, the data set including B seems to follow that linear pattern. Right. So observation B, although it's large in the x and the y direction, it it lies on the uh, linear um, linear line connecting x and y. So that's why it is intuitively clear that adding b does not really change your linear model. It follows the pattern of the data, it just off uh, in the x and the y direction. For c, it's a different story. If you look at observation c, then this green line is my regression line when I add c to my basis points, and then you see that adding c completely changes your linear model. So if we now ask ourselves, should we keep A, B, C in our data set, then actually we should focus on the quest question, should we keep C in our data set? Because A and B, whether you keep it in or you remove it, has little impact on your results. C, on the contrary, will have a major impact. And adding C or removing C will result in a complete different model, will result in very different predictions. So it's important to have a look at observation C.